Hi friends, this is Ashley Latecki Ellen Voss with Sky House Herb School and Apothecary. And today I'll be talking about the magic and the medicine of a very sacred plant called rue. So this plant is very sacred and special to me. And in my right now, ancestry is on my mind a lot. Um, I'm staying with my mother as we prepare for our move to Minnesota. And um, you know, I've been thinking a lot about my mother and my grandmother and just a lot of the gifts that have been given to me through my ancestry. And so this plant is a very sacred herb of Sicily, which is um, part of my lineage. And it's also a very sacred plant to Lithuania, which is also a part of my ancestry. So this plant has really a very special place in my heart and it's been in my life for a very long time. So I wanted to share a little bit more about that with you. So um, rue is a plant that is native to the Balkan region, um, but it has spread pretty much throughout the world now. It's grown in gardens, it's cultivated in many countries as a food or as a condiment, um, but it has a lot of historical use as a medicine and also as an herb of protection. So um, in Sicily, where um, part of my ancestry is from, that's my mother's mother's side, um, rue is a sacred plant that protects against the evil eye. And um, another way of, of thinking of the evil eye is jealousy. And um, it was grown around the outsides of houses to keep people from um, putting bad energy onto that household, either through jealousy or through bad thoughts. Um, it was also used um, in church services. So there was a very strong Catholic um, uh, influence in Italy and in Sicily. And so they would use sprigs of rue and they would dip them in the holy water and they would use it to spray and to bless the, um, the the people in church and um, I think they call them with the parishioners I think <laughs> um, it's been so long since I've been to church but um, they would use them to, to bless people with the holy water and uh, in Lithuania it was considered to be a plant sacred to the virgin and um, it was worn um, that brides when they would be married they would wear a, a crown so you can just imagine how beautiful that would be to have a crown of this beautiful plant right? Like in your hair as you're walking down the aisle to get married. Um, and so it was a, it was a sacred plant of, the, of maidenhood, of virginity, and also of purity. Um, it's also sometimes, you know, it's even referred to as the national plant of Lithuania. I think probably really close alongside the oak, two very sacred plants of that region. Um, so it, you know, it has a very special space and I think a lot of cultures, hearts. Um, I wanted to start off by sharing some stories of Rue in my, in my life, some of the ways that Rue has touched me, and then we can get into the energetics and yeah. talk a little bit about the plant actions and um, how to use it. So the first introduction I had to Rue was when I was in herb school, and um, gosh, I guess this was probably about 15 years ago. Um, I heard about the herb. I heard about its magical uses, and even though a lot of my um, original herbal studies uh, were very much based in, in scientific evidence and, and, you know, looking more at herbs um, from their phytochemistry perspective, um, there was something about this plant and the idea of it being used as a protector plant that really spoke to me. So when we had our first assignment to do a monograph on an herb, I chose rue and we went to um, we went to a library out in Ohio on a part of our field trip that has a ton, I forget which library it is out in Ohio that has like a ton of old herbal books. Um, I'm sure some of you can type it into the chat box if you're familiar with this. But we went out there, and so I searched Rue, and I just, I mean, I was blown away by the pictures. I'd never seen the plant live, but the pictures and the stories and the uses of this plant, and I was like, I have to meet this plant. Like, I need to know what, I need to know more. So when I went to one of my first herbal gatherings in Baltimore, I found a Rue plant and brought it home. I had it in a little pot in my small apartment, and it was happy. It was a happy plant, and I, it brought me so much joy, and a few things 
things that really struck me about the plant were its smell and its color. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you more about that when we get into the plant profile. But uh, one thing that was interesting is that this is supposed to also be a plant that protects against vermin. And um, it's an insecticide or, you know, it has compounds in it that are insect repellents. And in my apartment building, um, there were a number of people who had problems with roaches and bugs, and my apartment had none. And, you know, I had a big prominent plant um, in my windowsill, and, um, you know, you could smell it. You could smell the, you know, and you just touch the plant, and it lets off this incredible aroma. So I think that might have been part of the reason why, both it being a protector, but it also being um, a vermifuge or a repellent of insects. Um, the other, uh, another story about this plant was um, when I was in my 20s and I was practicing and teaching a lot of yoga, um, I did a yoga pose. Um, some of you might know um, uh, Setu Bandhasana, where you sit between your heels and you lay all the way back, and it's a you know very powerful stretch for your quads. Well, I was a little too you know excited to go into it and wasn't warm enough, and I actually strained both my MCL and my ACL, and I was in such pain for weeks I could barely walk. Um, I had to take a break from teaching, and I had read about rue being used homeopathically for joint pain, and it was a very specific joint pain. It was joint pain that was worse upon being still and better with movement. Um, also, it was associated with stiffness, and that's exactly what I had, is like my, my knees were stiff, but when if I was moving around, um, it would get a little bit better, but if I sat for too long, it would get worse. So I found a homeopathic lotion with rue and used that three times a day. It was a 30C um, potency, and I haven't been able to find it since. So if anyone knows of any good rue lotions or liniments, um, that's what I used on my knees. And it was within a week, I could tell a noticeable difference. And I was able to go back to practicing and teaching my yoga. So that was, you know, another thing I was like, wow, this plant is really powerful. Um, another time, um, this was more recent, this was probably maybe two or three years ago, um, I started growing rue in my garden. And so I have a really beautiful, well-established rue plant. And one of my friends came to do some photos for um, our website and our yoga studio and photos of the garden for me to use. And I was kind of just walking her through. She's also an, interested in herbs. So I was telling her about the plants. I told her about rue and just, you know, I said, it's a plant of protection. It's really incredible. And it has the most unique smell and, and taste, you got to try it. So um, I just picked off a sprig. It was probably, you know, right about this size, you know, very, very small size. I told her, I said, put it in your mouth and tell me what you feel. And that's the, that's the problem if you hang out with herbalists is they're going to probably be using <laughs> you to gather data. So I didn't tell her, you know, really anything about the use, you know, anything else about the plant. Just try it. Tell me what you think. You know, it's a very unique taste. So she puts it in her mouth. She's taking photos and all of a sudden she stops and she, she turns around and she says to me, wow, she's like, my eyesight has gotten better. She's like, I don't know what it is, but like I can see more clearly and the colors and the dimensions of everything have like really become more prominent. And I was like, really? She's like, yeah, the rue is like, really, like it's like cleaning my eyes out in some way. And I was like, yes. And that's actually one of its historical uses is that it's used to strengthen the eyes. And um, one of my friends and fellow herbalists, uh, Mimi Hernandez, she was telling me that in the Doctrine of Signatures, rue has very, these very dense, fibrous roots. And um, they kind of look like the deep um, fibrous tendons that attach to the eyes. And so in the Doctrine of Signatures, um, rue has an association with the eyes. And it also has a long history of use from Hippocrates and Dioscorides. They've used it as um, as eye medicine, and this is you know going back 60 A.D. Um, you know in historical herbal herbal traditions. So um, you know, I was so excited to hear her say that because she didn't know that history, but you know she had that experience. And so um, you know what I would do is whenever I would go out in the garden, I would just take a sprig and stick it in my tongue, and and I would also you know just feel like okay, like my senses would come a little bit more alive and awaken to the beauty of the plants around me. Um, and then I think there's um, two more stories. Um, one was um, 
that um, I, I like to bring herbs with me when I travel. And so I have this little amulet. Um, it's a little glass amulet and you can unscrew it and you can place herbs or you know a photo if you wanted to inside of it. And so I went to an herb gathering um, out in uh, Oregon and I was teaching at the gathering and I was really nervous and, you know, I knew a lot of people in the herbal community and, um, you know, I, I wanted to have um, just to wear an herb of protection for myself, but also um, something that would, you know, also kind of keep people from seeing me. And one of the historical uses and the more magical uses of rue, and this is true, um, my friend Mimi Hernandez also shared this with me, is true in the Latin culture as well as in the Italian or Sicilian cultures, um, is it was used to protect against other people's energy um, and, and to kind of safeguard you um, from, from both taking on other people's energies, but also losing your own energy. And I really truly found that when I was at the herb gathering and I was wearing it, it was almost kind of like I was invisible. <laughs> like I was like walking around and I would see people that I knew and, and, you know, like I would just kind of feel like I could almost like disappear kind of into the woodwork a little bit. And, um, you know, even though I, I love to teach, you know, I'm, I am also, a, you know, a bit of an introvert. So, um, you know, <laughs> at big gatherings, as much as I like to socialize, I also like to kind of retreat. And I really felt like Rue was with me, um, helping me in, in, especially in moments where I was like, I really kind of don't want to talk to any, like I kind of want to be in my own space, especially I was preparing to teach that day. And I really felt like it gave me protection and, and kind of made me a little invisible. So that was, that was a really neat um, experience. And then the last thing I wanted to share was um, how my grandmother uses this herb. And so my grandmother has the most incredible rue plant in here in her yard, just like my her and my mom have just like their rue is like, <laughs> you know, it's very much, um, you know, again, like ancestral medicine, like my grandmother's rue is probably like 10 years old and it's like big and hardy. It's up in Minnesota. So, you know, it weathers the winters up there. It comes back every year. Uh, my mom's had her rue, I think for maybe two or three years and it's big and prolific and my rue is good, but it's a little smaller and it's still trying to kind of like getting it's getting its footing in. Um, so my grandmother, she harvests large, you know, large batches of rue and hangs it to dry in her basement. And she makes, um, she's an incredible uh, quilter and seamstress and um, sews all sorts of things. So she'll use the dried rue with dried uh, lavender that she gets from someone that at her church that grows it. And she'll make these little sachets to put into your closets as a moth repellent and as an insect repellent. And she says it's really the only thing that she's found is really kept the moths um, out of her closets. And so she also sells them at her church. And I'm like, you know, little does she know that she's selling like a very sacred Catholic, <laughs> um, you know, an, an herb that was traditionally used um, for protection, um, you know, you know, in, in a space where I think the Catholic church, they don't use rue anymore in that that way so it's sort of like finding its way back into <laughs> into the church and in, in, in I think a very beautiful and kind of um, kind of incognito way um, so so that's how she uses it so let's talk a little bit now about the energetics of rue it's considered to be warm and dry and in an old Arab text it's called the taximum uh, I might be saying this wrong um, taquium sanit sanitatis Tanquium Sanitatis, this was written around 1400, and it's an old Arab medical text. Um, they consider it to be uh, warm and dry in the third degree, and part of the reason in the third degree, uh, which is you know, hotter than the first degree, but the third degree is because it can cause skin irritation. Um, it, can, it can cause blisters and burns on the skin in some people who are sensitive to the oils in the plant. Um, they also talk about it being um, used for, um, yeah, used for eye issues and also used for digestive complaints and especially for gas. So that, that was really interesting. Um, a few things to note about the plant that really, to me, make it such a unique herb is the color. And so, um, you know, you can see how, you know, compared with something that is like, you know, green, um, you know, that's not a great example of a true green, but this plant is a little bit more blue. It has this sort of bluish tint. And to me, it has almost like um, kind of a white, a white 
hint to it. This one has a little bit of water on it, so you're getting that reflection. But it's kind of, almost has like a powdery white, kind of ghostly um, coating to it. And I, to me, this plant is just very otherworldly. Like it's, it's not, you know, I love all plants and they all have magical and medicinal values, but there's something about rue that is of another world. Um, the smell is unlike any other scent on this planet I've ever smelled. It's this, oh, it's so good. You have to have, you have to smell it. Um, it's like, a mixture of um, it's like a it's like floral waters matched with baby talcum powder, blended with um, a little hint of uh, of like orange zest and like a little bit of like a heavy vetiver musk. I mean, it's 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 incredible. It's so complex and um, so unique to this plant. And so they've been able to isolate the compounds that make it smell, um, that make it have this unique smell. And, um, you know, they're continually trying to find uses for it. Um, another thing that um, I think makes this plant really special um, is that it is, um, it has been shown in research to, there was a, a study that was done in, uh, I think it was 1999, no, it was in 2011. And they took aqueous extracts of rue and um, they applied them to different types of cancer cells. So they applied it to um, skin cancer, colon cancer, liver cancer, and breast cancer cells. And I just wanted to read to you what the article says. This was from um, Anti-Cancer um, Research mag uh, Magazine or um, journal, Anti-Cancer Research Journal. And they found that it contains a bioactive compound, which independently known of known phytoactive mechanisms is a potent inhibitor of cancer cell proliferation and survival. So it contains bioactive compounds which are working independently of known phytoactive mechanisms. So there's something in this plant that's working in a way that they don't really understand. There's not, you know, the known mechanisms, they don't really, they don't really understand how these particular compounds are working, but they are inhibiting cancer cell proliferation and cancer cell survival. So that's pretty amazing. And, you know, again, when we think of a plant that has such a long history as a protector plant, and then we start to see the research coming up of how this plant, you know, is actually, it, it is a protector in other ways too. So it's a cancer protector, you know, it's a protector against cancer. Um, you know, another, another thing I came across when I was researching this plant was um, how the Hasidic Jews have used rue. And um, there was a, an account uh, in 1572 of a rabbi and they, it, it, this rabbi recommended taking sprigs of rue and carrying it with you in small amounts, placing it into an amulet to be protected from plagues and epidemics. How about that? How about relevance, right? <clears throat> so, you know, we, we see in um, Sicily protection against the evil eye and energetic infringements. My friend Nini, uh, Mimi Hernandez, um, she talks about in her Latin American culture it being used also to protect against the evil eye, um, but, you know, a, a little bit more of like kind of like energy vampires and um, so we see that um, she recommends using it, taking a sprig. She said it's especially a good remedy in Latin American culture. It's used for children who don't have those energetic barriers up yet. So you can take a sprig and you can put it in a child's backpack when they're going to school. Um, or you could you know, stick it in a cradle or stick it, you know, obviously out of reach of the baby um, or stick it in the back of a stroller if you're taking your baby out for a walk. I love those ideas she had um, to protect that child from negative energy influences but now we know um, that you know it also has other ways of protecting us and and I wouldn't be surprised too um, I want to do more research on this plant to see if it has any um, uses for uh, protecting against plagues and contagious diseases I mean that's certainly something that was um, had a you know there's a lot of historical use um, Dioscorides mentions using it as a protector plant against the plague um, let's see, in the 1918 uh, U.S. dispensary, it was used for um, any sort of hysteria um, and anxiety. And um, 
Hippocrates says that it was good for phlegmatic habits or weak and hysterical constitutions suffering from obstructed secretions. And there was something about that that made me also think about COVID-19. Um, you know, again, protector plants on the energetic side, but also, um, you know, one thing that we know about COVID-19 is how it um, obstructs the body from being able to get rid of phlegm um, and that things get really stagnant and that there's this sort of unproductive dry cough. And, I, and Hippocrates talks about this being very specific um, as, a, as a remedy to help move um, when there's blockages of secretion. Um, and there was also, there was another resource that found, um, yes, in the corpus um, Hippocratum. So the, the, the corpus or the collection of teachings of Hippocrates, um, they recommended using it against pulmonary diseases, which is diseases of the lungs. So there's a connection there too. And if we think about the Greek word pneuma, um, which is where we get the word pneumonia from, um, this connection to the lungs, that pneuma is like the spirit. It's like the way spirit comes in and out of our bodies. And, you know, in, to me, um, I strongly believe that there are, there's a, there's spirits, <laughs> you know, there's good spirits and bad spirits, um, and, and they take many different forms, but um, my experience of life has shown me this to be true. Um, and so, you know, if we think about the interactions we have with spirit um, and the lungs is really being the gateway into the body, we know that COVID, you know, it, it goes into the body and it settles in the lungs for most people, that it's a place of, um, it's a place, place where we're very vulnerable. And so to think about an herb that is a protector herb that also can help to clear and move that pneuma, move the air, move the spirit in and out of the body. And when you smell the plant, you can't help but take a deep breath. You can't help but want more of this spirit. Um, in Catholicism, this plant is also called the herb of grace. Uh, and, you know, there's nothing, I think, that um, bestows more grace than living through an epidemic and, um, you know, every morning waking up and saying, I'm healthy. Like, that's such a gift. That's such a gift of grace. And I, I really do feel like this plant reminds us of that grace and the way it grows, its smell, and just how... Um, how generous it is with its medicine. So let's end by talking a little bit about how do you use rue, because it's not a plant that you're gonna find um, at your co-op, you're not gonna find it in most herb stores. Um, and one of the reasons is a good one is because it's a very low dose herb. This is not an herb like catnip or chamomile that you can just take as a tea or take you know, a few droppers full. It's very, very low dose. So um, this herb can be used topically um, as a liniment, and so I've made a liniment before where you basically take, you know, maybe about this much rue and you can put it in um, rubbing alcohol. And rubbing alcohol is not to be ingested internally. It's only for external use. So you could cut up your rue or just place it in a jar. You could place it whole just like this in a quart jar. Fill it with rubbing alcohol. Let it sit, you know, really only for like a few days and it will, ex the oils will extract out. And then you can apply that to your temples for headaches. Rosita Arvigo, a Mayan, um, a woman who studied Mayan traditional medicine, she uses it for headaches, but you can also use it on sore joints, as I mentioned earlier. Another way to use rue is to use it homeopathically. And there's a long history of using this plant um, as a homeopathic remedy, you know, since the time of, of Hanuman. And it's been proven to be a really great uh, remedy for sore eyes, eyes that are tired from, um, from looking at the computer a lot, eyes that are tired from um, artificial lights. Um, it's also used for joint pain, for colic, digestive upset. So those are some of the ways that you can use this herb um, homeopathically. I'd recommend using a 30C and using five pellets, you know, three to five times a day. This herb can be used internally. And again, I just like to use, for me, every once in a while, I'll just take a little sprig like this, place it on my tongue, and I'll just suck on it, you know, for as long as I want to. Usually it's like, mm, you know, maybe like 10, 15 minutes, and then I'll spit it out. I won't swallow it. 
Um, but you can also make a tincture out of this. I would recommend a weaker tincture, like a one to five, one part plant to five part alcohol. And that can be a 50-50 mix if you're doing a dry herb, or you could do more like, you know, 80% if you're doing a, um, if you're doing a, a fresh herb, but do a one to five, make it weaker. And then out of that, you can take um, just like one to three drops on your tongue. And you know that should be plenty for, for helping with eyesight and also for um, helping with uh, joint pain or colic or digestive problems. Mimi, my friend I mentioned before, she said that um, in her culture, sometimes they'll add a sprig of it to potato salad recipes. I know a friend of mine who's from Ethiopia, she uses a sprig about the same size that I just picked here in her coffee every morning. They soak it in their coffee and then they take it out and they drink the coffee. Um, so, you know, it's, it's absolutely safe to use in small doses like that. Um, but if you're going to be doing a tincture, I would just use a drop or two drops. Um, you know, that's, that's plenty. Um, and then of course you can just use it as a talisman. You can use it to carry, to bring with you and just use it more as an energetic protector plant. You can grow it. It grows really well in pots. Um, it grows well in the earth. You know, even though here in Maryland, we have hard winters and in Minnesota, they have very hard winters. It's pretty resilient. It should come back for you year after year. Um, and it has these really odd, um, yellow flowers like you would when you see when I first saw flowers like really it's like huh it's like it's kind of like a blocky kind of um chunky flower <laughs> but you know it's it's you know it's uh unassum unassumingly beautiful um, and then one last thing to say is that if you are pregnant or nursing, you do not want to take rue um, because it has um, been shown to be uh, an amenagogue, which means that it moves the blood and moves the menstrual blood and it can cause abortions. So please don't use it if you're pregnant and um, also can cause photosensitivity. So if you, some people who are very sensitive, they have very sensitive skin, they'll find that um, if they touch the plant, they go outside in the sun, that they'll get uh, a rash or like blisters. Um, you know, I'm not, I, I can touch this plant all day and I've never had any problems, but some people do. So, um, you know, you know, proceed with caution if you don't know this plant when you're handling it. Some people like to harvest it with gloves um, because they are sensitive. So just, that's just a little note of caution. Um, so I hope you found that interesting. Um, again, this is such just, such a dear plant to my heart and um, I hope you get to meet it sometime. And I'd love to hear your stories of how you use rue and any formulas that you have as well. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys all again soon. Take care, bye.